Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to all of our attendees. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. The topic for today's discussion is transforming vendor performance through contract management. I am Scott Quinn, Vice President and Customer Success at Syrian Labs, the SaaS leader in enterprise contract management, and I will be your host for today. Before we get started, here are just a couple housekeeping items to keep in mind. The webinar slides and recording will be emailed out at the conclusion of today's webinar. And you can always enter questions in the chat panel in the lower part of the webinar panel. Here's a quick overview of the organizers for today's session. Ardent Partners uh, is joining us today here with Syrian Labs. Ardent Partners is a research and advisory firm focused on the source to settle process, defining and advancing the supply management strategies, processes, and technologies that drive business value and accelerate organizational transformation. Very excited to have Ardent Partners joining us today. Syrian Labs, we are the SaaS leader in enterprise contract lifecycle management. We help enterprises manage the complex contracting lifecycle on a single, easy to use platform, enabling improved savings, business outcomes, and effective risk management. Over the next 60 minutes or so, we'll be covering these key points. The state of procurement in 2020, impact of traditional contract management solutions, and how innovative new contract management strategies are helping companies improve their bottom line. And now let me introduce you to my co-speaker for today. Today I'm joined by Andrew Bartolini. Andrew is the founder and chief research officer at Arden Partners. With greater than 21 years in the industry and 11 years leading the charge at Arden Partners, Andrew is a globally recognized expert in sourcing, procurement, supply management, and accounts payable processes. As the chief research officer at Arden Partners, Andrew oversees all research and client programs including annual state of market and metrics that matter ebook series, technology advisor reports, Arden's monthly webinar series, as well as in-person and virtual CPO Rising summits. Andrew is also publisher of CPO Rising, the news and research site for chief procurement officers and other procurement leaders. Welcome, Andrew, and very nice to present with you today. Hey, hey Scott. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm very excited to, to present with you as well. I'm going to now request that Andrew share with us his insights on today's topic. Over to you, Andrew. Great, great. So, so, so thanks again, Scott, for the great introduction. Uh, you know, we're really excited to uh, be partnering with uh, Syrian Labs today. Um, today's presentation is, you know, essentially a highlight of, of, of a new research report that, that uh, you know, we are, are publishing focused on transforming vendor performance through innovative contract management, right? So I'm, I'm excited to, to really talk about this today and, and talk about the latest trends in, in, in procurement and in contract management. Um, you know, I'm sure that everybody listening in today knows that, that managing contracts is, is about much more than compliance. And, and, and contracts really are the glue that binds buyers and suppliers together, right? They're the, the document of record that enables and ensures that buyers maximize the value negotiated during the sourcing process and that suppliers deliver on the value they promise to provide. Right. What's really exciting for me, right, is that in 2020, there are new and innovative contract strategies and technologies that are changing the way that procurement and contract teams can collaborate with their vendors and, as a result, transform vendor performance. And, and, and so that's what we're going to cover today. And, you know, Scott, you know, already, you know, you know, gave an introduction to my firm, Arden Partners, you know, very briefly, right, so we're a Boston-based research and advisory firm that specializes in supply management and the source-to-pay process. Um, you know, and that, uh, you know, includes procurement, AP, P2P, and overall contracts. You know, we advise clients and publish research that helps business decision makers understand industry best practices and how to improve performance. And we also publish research that covers the technology landscape and helps professionals identify the best fit solution or solutions for their specific budget and requirements. You know, as we go to the, the next slide, you know, we, we, we also, one of the things that we do is publish a website called CPO Rising. And if you enjoy today's presentation and want to learn more, I invite you to visit our flagship website, CPO Rising, right? This is uh, and has been for a number of years the most visited site globally focused on procurement. Um, and, and, and so while the topic of the day is, 
these contracts and we're going to do a deep dive into them. I wanted to take a quick look at the state of procurement in 2020 uh, with a few slides. And, and I think it's fair to say that 2020 is unlike any year in recent memory, right? And, you know, you know, pretty quickly, right, C CPOs and procurement leaders around the world are facing an entirely new set of challenges, right, accelerated by a global pandemic that's disrupted an interconnected business world and its supply chain. You know, now CPOs have been called on to, to the front lines to defend their businesses, lead their teams, and ensure business continuity and resilience. Um, now, with pervasive uncertainty and tough times ahead in 2020, and, and almost assuredly likely in 2021, you know, I'd like to point out that you know, those of you listening in, um, you know, many of your company's best opportunities and most critical priorities are going to play to the strengths and expertise of your procurement department. And that best in class contract management has never been more important. And so, you know, the, the, the data that you're seeing here, right? So for the past 15 years, I've authored an annual CPO rising research study. It captures the views, plans, goals, and intentions of hundreds of global CPOs. Now, we usually conduct the study in, in the early part of the year, and, and with everything that's happened since mid-March, we ended up going back to market with a follow-on survey that was taken by 900, 954, specifically, very precise number, 954 procurement practitioners, and we asked them a few questions. And, and, and one of those was, was to assess the impact uh, of COVID-19 on their business operations, right? And, and, and what we see is that, you know, and, and what we know firsthand, all of us, you know, probably listening in from your home offices, is that the coronavirus pandemic has taken no prisoners on the home front, right? It was homeschooling and, and just, a, you know, a pretty dramatic shift in what we're doing in our home lives. You know, the same thing is really cascaded over, you know, to, to the business world, right? And while the pandemic has certainly picked business winners, right, think of CPG, pharma, and e-commerce, you know, it's also picked losers, right, travel, hospitality, uh, in, in, in a very real way and in real time. Uh, but more broadly, right, the, the business operations with many enterprises are facing unprecedented changes, extreme threats, and entirely new challenges. And after, you know, so I, I guess we were about two months in when we closed the survey, um, you know, at that point in time, 60% of, of procurement professionals reported that the impact of, 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 of the coronavirus of COVID-19 has either been extreme or significant on business operations and nearly all businesses are dealing with some level of change. And, you know, as long as the pandemic continues, the impact on all enterprises is expected to increase or intensify. Now, you know, we wanted to look at the next slide and, and, and see where where the pandemic has hit. And, and, and maybe not surprisingly, you know, the pandemic has hit the supply chain hardest. Um, you know, the coronavirus has had broad reach across the business world, right? It's disrupted workplaces. It's disrupted business relationships, you know, as well as the talent is the operations and, and the systems that, that really drive an enterprise, right? I had a conversation with a, a CPO of a of a Fortune 50 company, and you know she was, you know, she's in one of those those, those winning industries, right? So they couldn't be more busy. Um, you know, they are, you know, you know, retooling factories to to you know make the make the products that are in highest demand, and you know, you know that has been you know a positive shift for them, but it's also been a, a challenge because one of the things that she noted was that her entire team, based on the East Coast. Um, within within North America, anyway, you know, was 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 not set up to work from home, and that they were dealing with many sort of internal challenges. But but more broadly, right? So that's anecdotal, right? What the data shows us is that you know, 43% of businesses are saying that disruptions have been felt most severely in 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 the work and area that procurement is most focused on, the supply chain, right? Internal operations, you know, is another major area that's been disrupted along with, you know, the workforce, which has almost universally been shifted to a work from home environment. And, you know, it's unclear now what, you know, what happens in this interim period. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, the point here is right. So, you know, you know, we don't want to sort of beat this point to death as we've all been facing it. And it's been, you know, you know, we've had more written about global supply chains in the past five months than we have in the in the previous 10 years. And, and you know, I think everybody's well aware of that. But there have also been some specific implications in, in what the CPO is focused on and the pressures that they're facing as we move to the next slide, right? So before the coronavirus impacted procurement teams around the world, you know, if you go back to the beginning of this year and, and you know, 
we at Arden Partners had, had, had published a research alert that had said that we felt that uh, that that's, that supply risk and, 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 and you know, more generally in global supply chains, we're facing a higher level of uncertainty and risk than at any other time before. Um, but we didn't expect something something like what has happened, uh, you know, in the first half of this year. But but at the beginning of the year, right, you know, we were, you know, still in the midst of the longest economic expansion, um, you know, in the United States anyway, and, 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 and more globe, you know, more broadly, you know, very, very strong, you know, economic, steady and strong economic growth for the past decade. Um, you know, at that at that time, right? So, you know, CPOs were, were continuing to focus on the things that were going to drive sort of longer term change, right? Digital transformation, focusing on improving their processes and, and increasing agility. But in the immediate aftermath of the global pandemic, business needs and the CPOs focus quickly shifted to prioritizing cash management, increasing savings and improving supply chain visibility. Right. In, in times of great stress and uncertainty. And, and that's really the larger point. Right. So, you know, eventually we're going to get through the coronavirus pandemic, but there are going to be other periods of time where things become uncertain. Right. We often reference the, the Great Recession, you know, late 2008 to 2009. For those of you that were working then, um, you know, this this was a, a, an extremely challenging time. Uh, for many organizations, and, and while the bounce back was was pretty fast and V-shaped, um, you know, more generally over that period of time, you know, procurement was really called upon to, um, you know, really excel. And 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 for many organizations, you know, when the opportunities to drive sales, um, you know, when when growth and and and, and other sort of aspects of a, of a business that are that are going to propel it forward are are looking more muted and 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 less possible organizations revert to their more basic selves and and, and that means that cash is king right that means that savings becomes much more important and that sourcing leaders will be reevaluating their suppliers and bringing more RFPs to market right you know to you know when you start to think about you know this area and and, and, and the shift that we've seen and, and it's been a pretty quick shift back to sort of the, the basics if you will you know when when i look at that the the top cpo pressures i look at how you know contracts are you know really become, have the opportunity to become a much more important tool in support of the cpo's new focus right i think that you know, again, we're dealing with the pandemic now, but, you know, as we move forward into the 2020s, right, there's going to constantly be shifts in the direction of the market. There's going to be, you know, other factors and other elements that are going to require procurement to be, be agile and adapt at shifting to market demands, you know, whether positive or or negative as, as we're dealing with now. And, you know, I wanted to you know, talk about some of the, the, the major trends that we've seen, um, you know, over the next decade, right, uh, you know, and, 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 and in the 2020s as we move to the next slide. Um, you know, I think that, you know, in 2020, procurement leaders are still focused on savings, delivering value, and automating and linking their processes, you know, but they're also focused on new innovation and collaboration and, and visibility and agility initiatives as they continue to prepare themselves and their teams for the next phase of procurement's evolution. Now, um, you know, one of the one of the major trends that we've seen over the past decade and into the 2020s is that business continues to change at an accelerating speed. You know, as enterprises and their suppliers are are forced to adjust to new disruptive technologies, right? Certainly, we've seen you know much more intense competition from a from a global marketplace, and 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 that continues to reset you know, expectations, it continues to reset your customer expectations, right? You know, the need to deliver better products and a faster product cycle time at a lower cost with greater and more robust features, you know, is, you know, is, is, is the expectation in most industries today. And it's the expectation on the supply side too. Um, you know, mobile devices, cloud technology, um, you know, the level of communication, you know, business networks have all radically are altered how and how frequently, you know, where and when, you know, you know, procurement professionals are able to communicate, collaborate, and engage with their colleagues, their customers, their partners, and suppliers. And, you know, we've really seen a, a paradigm shift in business. And, and, you know, there are some implications in that. And, and, and so, you know, something that we started writing about in 2012, 2013, is that, you know, we really feel very strongly that the winners in procurement will be the agile organizations that can leverage their strategic prowess 
uh, and fluid resources to anticipate and support dynamic business requirements you know amidst you know more rapid changes in the industry right more rapid changes in supply markets and more rapid changes in customer behaviors right you know you know sort of simply put right if i sort of you know, say this very frequently but you know we believe that procurement agility is the characteristic that will help procurement departments advance and thrive you know in in what really is a new age of 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 innovation where um you know, the, the level of competition and innovation really starts to expand beyond mere products and services to core business processes and to entire business models. And so, you know, wanted to, to bring us to the second major trend that is impacting procurement in the 2020s, and that's supplier innovation, right? I think that, you know, I, 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 I always use a quote uh, from Bill Joy, one of the founders of, of Sun Microsystems, and, you know, that, that, that that's a company that, you know, for those of you that, uh, you know, are, are newer in your careers, maybe less familiar with, but Sun Microsystems was one of the, the, the innovative hardware companies that really supported the growth, the initial growth and expansion of the internet. And, and what one of its founders said was that innovation will, uh, one of the things that he said, right, uh, Bill Joy, was that Innovation will happen, um, and 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 that, it, but that it will happen elsewhere, right? You know, no company, uh, you know, has the reasonable expectation that they have cornered the market on innovation in their market, you know, in their in their specific industry, right? Um, you know, as a result uh, of this, and, and and the awareness of this, right? You know, we have moved towards a more specialized world, right? And 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 what that boils down to is that the you know the performance uh and, and and the products and the the services that your suppliers uh, deliver to your business today have a more direct and immediate impact on your own products and services that you deliver to your customers and therefore on your business results and and you know this is you know one of the major drivers of procurement as we move forward into the excuse me as we move forward into the 2020s because um, you know procurement really is the eyes and ears out into the supply markets, right? And and innovation is happening in all supply markets, right? I always you know think that you know we look very quickly at the consumer electronics industry and we see dramatic changes. We see you know market leaders you know disappearing in in, in a matter of years as they're trumped by new new entrants and and, and more modern you know innovative. Um, products and services. Um, you know, the same thing's happening in all of your supply markets today. It may not be happening in as visible a way, and it may not be happening at such a dramatic pace, but it is happening. And, you know, it's just a, a good reminder for those of you as you look back at your at your supply base of the past, uh, you know, if you go back five or, or 10 years, if your supply base today looks very similar to your supply base five years ago or 10 years ago, you're missing innovation um, and, and you're losing out and, and, and you're putting your company at risk, right? And so, you know, let's look at trend number three. And this has really been a major focus uh, uh, for myself and, and, and Arden Partners over the past couple of years. And, and, and sort of simply put, you know, you know, due to the rise of, of business process automation tools, cloud-based applications, mobile solutions, right? You know, there's there's simply much more data that's being created, right? Uh, you know, there's you know, you know, you know, half of the world's data has been has been um, created in the past 18 months, and so you know, we believe very strongly that over the next couple of years, procurement organizations are going to uh, begin to better mine that data and, and and make more sense of that. And so I'm not talking about your historical spend data, which is still very valuable. I'm talking about the operational data. I'm talking about your supplier data. I'm talking definitely today about your contract data and how organizations are going to begin to extract that data, uh, transform it into intelligence, and transform that intelligence into value. And to do so in a way that radically transforms how procurement you know, does its work and how it evaluates its own performance and how it better understands the drivers of real value, right? Sort of the, the money ball concept as applies to procurement is something that we're starting to see today and something that we expect to see, uh, you know, radically transform the industry over the next decade. Uh, and so that brings us to trend number four, right? And so, you know, this is the idea or concept of everything as a service, right? Um, right. So, well, you know, I, I, I think everybody sort of understands the concept, right? So there's traditional services spend, and then there's also, you know, this shift towards an everything as a service market, right? So, you know, you have, you know, 
you know, so for procurement organizations, you know, the average procurement organization manages, um, you know, 63% of their overall spend. And it's been a number that's been in and around 60% for a number of years. Um, you know, the services spent, right? So, so your legal services, your, 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 your SOW spend, your, your management consultants, um, your contingent labor, things like that, that, that are, that are, that are harder to, harder to buy is, is one type of service spend. But, but what we have seen, you know, you know, really transform, you know, business and our economy is, is that, you know, everything is, you know, essentially being modeled and sold as a service today, right? Subscriptions, on-demand access are replacing traditional purchases. You know, we see this in software, right? So I've been, you know, working in this industry for 20 plus years and, you know, you know we're 15, 16 years uh, into, you know, moving to cloud-based subscription uh, models as opposed to, you know, buying a, you know, a permanent license and, and paying some level of maintenance. Um, but, but this is happening everywhere, right? So, you know, one example, right? So, you know, makers of planes, right? So, so, so your, your, your Rolls Royce, your Airbus, your Boeings, right? You know, are, you know, they used to just sell you a plane and, you know, maybe there was a services compa maintenance component, um, as part of that. But, but, but many, many, plane manufacturers, you know, have now all developed a fly-by-the-hour concept, right, where they essentially provide the exact same service for exactly the same products, but charge customers based on usage, right, a, a flying per hour uh, of the engine charge. You know, now built into this charge is the maintenance required to keep the planes ready for use, and, and, and so, you know, this has happened with large capital purchases as well as even, you know, the common everyday widgets in so many industries. And so, you know, there's implications on the spend, um, you know, and, 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 and the payments, right? It's, it's much more normalized, right? It's better tied to usage, but it requires more advanced supplier management, right? Because you're paying for a service and an agreed upon, you know, service level that has to be tracked, right? You need to look at uptime. You need to look at quality. You need to look at availability and access. And, you know, it's really changing the way that, that that procurement can engage and 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 manage these, you know, and manage the supplier relationships that are very important. And so, um, you know, as we as we start to look now at the at the impact of, of traditional contract solutions, and um, you know, if if we were to sort of summarize these trends, you know, what we see as we move to the next slide is that uh, we see a need for you know greater agility, better supplier relationships, a need to convert data into value and the need for better supplier relationship management due to much greater services spend. And, and so, you know, a shift needs to occur, um, you know, you know, and, and in the minds of, of CPOs, because, you know, as we look here at the, the source to settle process, right, contract management, you know, really has an opportunity to impact and, and, and you know, impact in a very significant way each of these major trends and, and for it to be, you know, top of mind for procurement and the CPO because the opportunities are, are simply too large. Now I'm showing you the the standard source to settle process, and, and this is the way that Arden Partners thinks about, and you know, this is this this actually reflects the entirety of of of, of what we focus on as an analyst firm and as a research house, right? We look at, you know, the the supplier relationship um, and the spend in, in in a holistic way, right? So you know, whether you're starting of spend analysis and analyzing your spend and going through the sourcing process and contracting and then buying and, and paying against those contracts and, and managing the spend and the relationships, um, you know, you know, contracts is, is, is a center and focal point. But, you know, if you were to click, um, you know, another way to to look at, you know, the overall contract, um, you know, and supplier relationship is, you know, what happens pre uh, before the contract signed and what happens after the contract signed, right? And so wanted to, to, to look at how uh, companies typically, you know, generate value across the full process. And, you know, let, let, if we move to the next slide, let's, let's start, you know, pre-signature on the impact of contract solutions, right? And so, you know, let, let, Andrew, let's just start here. with the basic. Hey. Yeah, Scott here. If it, oh. just, just real quickly on uh, on that, right? I mean, traditional, if you look at, uh, I got into the CLM space uh, first as a young professional about 15 years ago. Yes. Those legacy those legacy CLM tools were focused on little more than replicating the work that I did as an intern, file clerk work. Right. Effectively, you know, taking your paper files and putting them into a digital repository and applying a very limited set of, um, you know, alerts and notifications and some some capability to search, right? right. But certainly, right. as you talk about transformative technologies, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later when it comes to Sirion Labs, I see the rise of CLM 
truly transforming um, what the value delivered by procurement and the contract lifecycle management process as a whole, right? Modern CLM delivers so much more than simple workflow and search inside of a repository, right? Modern CLM should be your AI powered assistant to help you deliver more effective and efficient uh, management of your contracting process, both pre and post signature. And I, I think that's what you, I'll, you know, I'll turn it back over to you here to talk about some of the benefits that you're seeing in, uh, in your, in your research. Right, right. So, so, I mean, I, I, I think you make a great point and, and, and that's, you know, that's really why I'm excited about the, the, the contract lifecycle management solutions market and the newer opportunities that, that, that the, these newer, more advanced solutions are, are presenting to procurement, right? So, you know, we just talked about all of the major trends that are really going to drive procurement forward over this ne next decade. You know, the, the more advanced contract solutions are, 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 are going to be able to drive value and impact in each of those areas. So there's a very good fit between sort of the direction that procurement is going and the solutions that they're going to need with, with what's now available in the market. But, you know, we still wanted to do sort of, you know, let, let's cover some of the basics here. And, and I think you're absolutely right, right, that, you know, sort of the core value proposition that you see from process automation. And what we've tracked is that, right, so, you know, if you're automating the contract, you know, you know, negotiation and authoring and management process, right, you know, you're, you're, you're getting efficiencies, right? And, and, and so the, sort of the first, the first layer of value is, as, as we've seen in our research, right? And so we have benchmarked, well, one of the things that our partner says is we've benchmarked and surveyed uh, thousands of distinct procurement organizations over, you know, the decade plus of, of our time in the market. We've actually done more market research in the supply management and contract management space than, than, than any other firm. And what we see is that when organizations deploy contract, you know, contract management solutions, right, they're, their contract uh, execution cycle times are significantly faster, right? And so, you know, this this is this is a big benefit, but it's it, it's clearly not the only benefit. But but it's a start, right? And so, you know, resource strapped CPOs and other uh, you know procurement leaders, you know, remain pressed to drive greater value faster and more effectively. And and you know, to do so, you know, utilizing these tools is a benefit, right? And and you know, this benefit also translates over to suppliers, right, who, um, you know, are also, um, you know, spending less time in the contracting process, right? So it does, you know, we, we're we still, you know, sort of challenged, I think, with procurement and, and suppliers and, and how we move from, you know, difficult contract negotiations that are often viewed as, as net sum to the more collaborative relationship. But, you know, automating the contracting process, you know, can, can provide, you know, a, a quick win-win for both sides. And so, you know, wanted to talk a little bit about the effectiveness and, and, and on the next slide. Right, so it's it's not simply efficiency, right? It, it's becoming more effective, right? Modern automated contract management tools can save enterprises time, effort, and money during the negotiation, but they can also help prevent them from making costly mistakes, right? So for enterprises looking for cost-effective ways to increase efficiencies, performance, and value, you know, these tools you know, are essential, right? On the effectiveness side, right? Smarter, more effective contract management, right? So whether that is you know, some type of, you know, AI-based smart template selection uh, that, that helps you, you know, sort of understand, you know, whether it's, you know, the category that uh, the contract is for or the region or the specific user or business unit, right? Smart contract technologies can really, you know, drive, drive, drive the process forward and, and take, you know, human error out of the equation. And, and, and at the same time, right, so, you know, we're dealing with, you know, the global pandemic, you know, many companies are, 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 are looking at, well, hey, do we have a force majeure clause in our contracts and, and what are the implications of that? Um, you know, other issues arise, you know, when you have a, a contract management solution, right, you can identify gaps that may exist in your normal contracting process, add add something once to the system and make sure that it propagates going forward, right? So, so pretty big opportunities here. Now, if we go to the next slide, right, on the pre-signature side and, and, and really where, you know, most people start to think about uh, the impact of contract solutions, you know, on, on both the pre and, and, and post-signature side is, is savings leakage. Now, before I became an analyst uh, about 15 years ago, I was a strategic sourcing consultant and, and, and you know, essentially managed more than a half billion dollars in e-sourcing projects and indirect, direct, and services 
um, you know, so as a, a sourcing expert, but 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 more of a category generalist, more of a process expert. And you know, we would work with large cross-functional teams on multi-million-dollar sourcing projects. Um, you know, There's a huge investment of of, of time. You know, from the project team, uh, you know, significant investment of money, you know, paying consultants. And, you know, we would typically identify a huge savings figure. But then I'd move on to the next project um, and, and there'd be a handoff to, you know, sort of from the contract award. We've identified the highest value supplier. We pass it off to a different team. Uh, but when that happens and, and, and that would happen, you know, and this happens very frequently, whether there's, um, you know, consultants involved or not. You know, there's a lack of follow-up, right? Or, or suppliers, you know, smart suppliers, right? You know, come in and, and, and retrade the sourcing award. Or, you know, what what I found frequently happened was that there was a reversion back to the incumbent. Um, you know, because they they already had a relationship in place, and you know, if they met some sort of baseline savings target, um, you know, they would go with the incumbent supplier. You know, at a at a price that was often significantly higher than what was awarded. Um, yeah, but whether or not you have consultants involved, right, there's usually some type of, of trade-off um, or passing for, um, you know, procurement organizations. Um, so, uh, you know, essentially, right, so, you know, there's an erosion of value or potential for savings leakage, right? And so when you have an automated contract management solution, you're better able to capture the, the terms of, of, of what was sourced and negotiated and ensure that you know those those terms and, and its pricing and, and its service levels and, and 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 other you know risk management factors you know make it into the contract itself. And so let's move to risk management very quickly, um, right? So you know CPOs and their procurement teams have been responsible for achieving and maintaining compliance with supplier contracts and corporate policies for many years. Um, and so there's there like savings leakage. There's two components to risk, but you know. What happens when you're you're working with you know automated contract management systems solution is that you are you know avoiding human error. You are ensuring that you know the governance and and and, and the risk management and and, and protocols that uh, you have determined are your best practices you know are cascading forward in into your you know executed contracts. And so let's move to the next slide and talk a little bit about. Um, you know, the post signature and, and the impact of, of contract solutions, right? And so, you know, each year I've mentioned we do an annual research study. And so that, you know, what we've seen is that in 2020, which is not too dissimilar from previous years, um, you know, that, 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 that the, the spend, you know, that's contract compliant and the transactions that are contract compliant, you know, have sort of hovered in this 60, 70 percent range. And, you know, this is this, this, there, there's a variety of reasons for this, but but where contract management solutions can come in is to, is clearly to improve those numbers. And we're going to talk about that, um, you know, in, in a more significant way in a few minutes. But, you know, with lack of solutions, um, you know, that, that capture the you know, the contract and, and, and make the information available to those that are buying against the contracts, right? There's lack of visibility, there's lack of general awareness, there's there's lack of communication, and there's lack of influence and control, right? And and, and so when you have contract management solutions and you have you know a place where, where these can be centralized, where these you know the information can be shared in, 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 in a much clearer and direct way, you know, there's a huge impact. And and if we go to the next slide Right. You know, you know, one of the one of the things that that, that should, you know, I, I think procurement professionals know this intuitively, if not this value. Um, right. 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 What I'm showing you here is a, a stunning stat that, that simply does not get enough attention. You know, you know, and, and what this means is that every maverick dollar of spend actually costs somewhere between an extra 12 and 18 cents to your bottom line. Right. So now a big part of that extra cost is simply paying a higher price. But then there's also the loss of efficiencies in the PO and invoicing process. You know, are you enabling a new supplier? Are you dealing with a fully manual order and invoice? You know, do you lose visibility into the spend details and, and therefore lose an ability to influence the spend, right? And so, you know, big opportunities here, right? To just the visibility that, that, that the contracts provide and, and the ability to, to serve as a reference point to ensure that uh, there's a reduction in Maverick spend. And so, you know, come to, to you know, an, another chart that, you know, has has more of a 2010 feel than 2020 feel. If we go to the next slide, um, you know the impact of you know contract management solutions, you know, really sort of drawn out, um, you know, in in a much more visual way, but in a quantified way, right? So 15 years ago, when I be, 
first became an analyst. You know, I spent a large amount of my time focusing on, on helping procurement teams and, and the CPO better establish credibility for themselves. And, and one of the big issues that, that we found consistently was that there was a, a, a gap in the definition of, of savings, right? There was a lot of ambiguity. Procurement wanted to focus, the CPO wanted to focus on what we've identified as the potential savings. And the CFO wanted to talk about, well, what was realized, um, you know, or oftentimes what was booked. But but as we sort of looked at and came to an agreement that that you know really how procurement should be evaluated is what what the company actually saves against the contracts that it negotiates. But but a lot can happen between the time that a contract is awarded and 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 when companies start to buy against it, right? So I talked about you know contract negotiations, um, you know where we see you know smart salespeople coming in and, and essentially retrading contracts, uh, you know, and that's price and that's service level. Uh, we see an erosion of value there. We see an erosion of value in the implementation process, right, when the contracts aren't well communicated, when it's not clear, um, you know, what the service levels are, when it's not clear what the pricing is, right? I mean, one of the things that hap has happened in, you know, with the level of, of competition in the marketplace is that the complex, you know, you know, the contract structures have gotten increasingly complex. And so for organizations to, to sort of execute on and, and fully leverage the value of, 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 of what's a pretty significant investment of time and resources in the sourcing process, right, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of opportunities for the erosion of value. Um, and certainly there's other factors like demand management, right? So buying less of something can lower realized savings, but, but that's generally viewed as a positive. And, and Scott, let me, let, let me pull you back in here. I know you've got some thoughts here, right? You guys have done your own research and, and, and see this erosion of value or savings leakage. Maybe maybe walk us through your model. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. And uh, what I'd like to start with is, is this model that you have here actually very closely aligns to what Sirion Labs has seen over the last seven plus years of our company's existence, right? If we look at post-signature management and the impact of, of value erosion, we primarily see this falling into four main buckets or areas, right? And I'll kind of align them to the buckets that you have here as well, right? What you see right. is contract negotiation, or we see as, you know, contract deviation error, right? Uh, in incorrect interpretation of the contract or application of the billing rules inside the contract amounting in our case uh, to about 40% of the error uh, that, that, uh, that we're seeing with our clients. Uh, during the you know implementation and ongoing delivery processes, delivery failures, failure to meet certain KPIs, or failure to implement entire portions of the contract, right? Whether they were formally or informally agreed to uh, to, to to not be delivered, right? Re representing a you know a small portion uh, of of those errors. The largest uh, error that we see in our case really in the comes in the what I'll align to your P2P process, right? I'll call it the services receipt or consumption and usage errors sure many com many companies really fail to manage and monitor the the consumption of volume based contracts um, especially around services effectively right I liken it to the old boy scout you know when I was in scouts lick your finger stick it in the air check the direction of the wind is it directionally correct Right. But are yep. you examining the data at a granular enough level and aligning that data to your billing rules in your contract to ensure you're not paying for something that you shouldn't be? Right. I, I liken it to, um, you know, I've seen many, for example, infrastructure contracts over the years that specify if an asset is not is not uh, identified on the network within 90 days, it's not billable. Well, are you actually checking, right? What What's the scanning data telling me? Are you verifying that those assets that are on your bill are actually actively connected and deployed and are not sitting in a room for redeploy and should not be billed, right? We've seen millions of dollars of leakage in those types of scenarios uh, as we, um, you know, as we've deployed our platform for our, for our clients. And then the last piece I'd really um, like to talk about would be computational errors. Right prior to joining Sirion Labs, I was a sourcing consultant like yourself uh, and uh, helped large organizations source and then build large vendor management organizations. Uh, there's proliferation of uh, complex pricing algorithms, which I um, can somewhat uh, claim I've contributed to over the years, which make it difficult for the folks that are operating these contracts ongoing to ensure that the billings are accurate and correct. Not just simple fixed price or cost plus, but base charges, arc rooks, dead bands, banded pricing, and other pieces. 
these these complex pricing algorithms are not well um, supported inside of your existing P2P or source to pay processes and typically involve human intervention. And anytime you introduce human intervention, you introduce opportunity for error, right? And you should be looking for ways and tools uh, to, to, to automate that process to ensure you know you're plugging the gaps and any of the any of the opportunities for leakage that you've identified here or that uh, I've just spoken about uh, back to you Andrew yeah no I think that's great so so let's just look at risk just for a second here because I want to really dive into you know sort of the newer and innovative um, areas right so you know I, I think two two data points right so you know only about a third of procurement organizations have a formal supply risk management program in place and that contract management solutions can really provide an effective starting point um, to begin to better understand the risks that you have in your supply base and in your supplier relationships and the cuts across all of these areas and then I wanted to just move quickly to the final uh, slide of data, um, it really talks about the best-in-class uh, contract advantage, right? So in any Arden Partners market research study, we identify the top 20% of performers based upon certain performance metrics. And what the data I'm showing you here show, shows and tells us is, you know, as we look at, at what best-in-class procurement organizations do, you know, they're, they're much more likely to utilize, um, you know, automated contract management solutions. And the results that they see, which cascade into, you know, bottom line, uh, a bottom line impact is higher compliance rates, right? The fact that they've got visibility, you know, into their contracts and, 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 and visibility into the spend and how they manage it, um, you know, means that they're able to provide greater influence uh, and impact on the organization. And they save a significantly higher uh, um, amount of money on a much larger spend portfolio. But what I want to do now is really just dive into, you know, the impact of innovative contract solutions, right? And, you know, if, if we go to the next slide, Right. If you've not been paying close attention to the contract management or contract lifecycle management solution space for the past few years, you have missed some very exciting new innovations. And, and I would say that this area is the hot space across the source to settle process right now. And you know, that could be because the space has, has lagged some other areas from an adoption standpoint, um, you know, and, and is catching up. But it's also because there are some new entrants driving renewed focus on contract management solutions. And so, you know, look at these innovations. There, there's three main areas areas that I wanted to focus on, right? And the first is automated compliance management. Um, you know, over the past decade, you know, the level of competition we see in markets has expanded dramatically, and suppliers now compete for business across a much wider range of areas, you know, more than simply price per piece. Right? Pricing has certainly gotten more complex, but service levels and revenue models and financing structures have also become more complex, right? So, you know, it's not just tiered matrix and volume-based pricing or index-based pricing. Um, you know, what we have, what, where we find ourselves in 2020 is that there's much greater complexity in supplier contracts. And, you know, there's no doubt that, that digitizing a business's procurement contracts and gaining a broad view into its, its contracts and associated obligations can drive huge value by enabling, you know, greater contract compliance and plugging savings. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, certainly the, the header level information aggregated in, in a single location is helpful. Um, you know, but the line item price audits and other compliance efforts that drive great value in that situation remain a mostly manual effort. And, and so what, what gets me very excited is that there are new contract management solutions that streamline and automate compliance in an advanced and powerful way, right? So these capabilities throw out, you know, more than basic header level information and, you know, you know, and can capture con specific contract obligations, complex pricing schedules, payment terms, associated SLAs and performance guarantees and, and and they can also extract the data from electronic files and electronic images. And so so what we're talking about really here is, is something that Ardent has been focused on for the past few years and that's big data management and analytics. Right. So by extracting both structured and unstructured data and organizing it, you know, these new contract systems have the ability to take large amounts of, of, of contract data, extract it and parse it so that it becomes usable structured data. Right. You can look at your obligations, your performance SLAs and your pricing, and that can better support supplier management or governance and invoicing. Right. So by capturing and centralizing key contract details and organizing them in a way to guide contract and compliance management, you know, these systems help procurement and other stakeholders track and manage key supplier obligations 
and their performance to ensure that supplier invoicing matches what was contracted, right? So we spend a lot of time at Arden Partners focused on the AP process and AP automation and invoicing. And when, when, when you look at a, a classic three-way match, right, modern contract management solutions are able to match orders, calculate complex pricing structures, and essentially predict invoice values in an automated way, right? So this streamlines invoice processing. It ensures price compliance. And, and, it, and it saves a significant amount of value, right? And so, you know, doing this in an automated way, you know, is, is you know, a, a level step ahead of where we were just a few years ago. So I want to move to, to talk about sort of the expanded services management on the next slide for procurement and the opportunity here, right? Because there are, um, if we move to the next slide, there are many uh, implications in moving to an everything as a service economy. Um, I'm not sure if uh, we can move to, to the next slide there or if I haven't uh, yet. Yeah, there we go. Great. All right. So I wanted to talk about uh, expanded services management. You know, one of one of the impacts of uh, in everything as a service economy is that services contracts require more effort and focus to manage. Right. If you buy an item, you know, generally there are fewer transactions and simply fewer things to manage with the supplier. Uh, services contracts in general, right, so traditional services contracts tend to be more closely managed by business stakeholders. And, and, and so when you have, you know, for example, you have a large management consulting project in the business, procurement's not getting involved in the weekly project meetings and, and essentially plays a light or, 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 or slight or, or potentially no oversight role, except potentially at major project milestones and, and, and around invoicing. And so as we shift, this is also happening with the shift to, you know, this new kind of on-demand subscription-based contracts. When you no longer own the plan and, 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 and are managing its maintenance, you know, your, your, your cost model moves towards a usage-based model, um, you know, which can, which can have value. But, but then the users are needed to track usage, but also, you know, quality and other service levels and features that are embedded in the subscription or per-usage cost. With an ability to extract and present those service level terms to users, the procurement can regain a voice in the overall supplier management discussion. And, and, and this is really valuable and very important because it becomes very easy for businesses to simply renew a subscription. Right. If you think about, you know, how often in your personal life you subscribe to something and, and, you know, a year goes by, two years go by, and you look up and you realize that you're now subscribed to something that you never or rarely use and that the price has also gone up. Right. You know, you know, these new solutions, you know, enable procurement to become much more involved. And, you know, I think it's also important to note that these subscription models, you know, while they change the payment timing and, and, and frequently create a clearer cost accounting model, it's not necessarily a cheaper way to go than buying something, and it's frequently more expensive. And, and so, you know, there is often this inflection point three or four years out where a TCO analysis would recommend purchasing the item. And so these are considerations that, you know, if you have this ability into the cost structures, into the service levels, and into, you know, what we're going to talk about on the next slide, you know, the vendor performance, you're much better positioned to uh, add value to the overall process, right? And so, you know, one area that most procurement teams can improve upon is supplier relationship and supplier performance management. And newer, more advanced contract management solutions, you know, are, are really able to help procurement teams advance quickly in this area. You know, now traditional supplier performance utilizes surveys and scorecards, which it sends out to stakeholders. The reality is that this can give procurement, right, it, it, it is that finger in the wind that Scott was talking about, right, it can give you a sense of how well the supplier is performing and how the stakeholders feel about the supplier. But what's often missing from that equation is what the contractual obligations of a supplier actually are. Right? You send a survey out to a stakeholder, they're not going and, and, and doing a deep dive into the supplier contract before filling out the survey. So their expectations of what a supplier should be doing and what the contracted terms are can have a pretty wide variance. And so as contracts become more complex, different service levels may be added or taken out and, and stakeholders may have absolutely no idea uh, or view into, you know, into that negotiation, right? I, I think the point I'm trying to make is that by capturing contractual pricing terms, by tracking supplier delivery and performance, and by incorporating any additional data, you know, like, like, like price indices, uh, you know, quality levels, you know, these newer contract management systems are able to calculate what the value of a supplier invoice should be and, and provides a platform su for suppliers and AP or the buying organization to collaborate and resolve any potential discrepancies or disputes when the actual invoice does not match the value, but, but beyond that price compliance, which again has a bottom line impact and cost. 
right? The system can better capture, share, and ultimately quantify the quality and overall performance against non-price attributes of a supplier contract as well, right? So this visibility enables procurement and the business stakeholders with the proper context to better evaluate supplier performance. And then it allows them to communicate issues to suppliers with greater accuracy and in a more timely way. Right, so by improving the performance feedback loop, procurement can collaborate with suppliers. You know, whether that's in in, in a QBR or a, a quarterly business review or or in an ad hoc way. Um, you know, you know, it, it, it's a better, more robust conversation. It's more accurate, but but also, you know, it, it's better able to you're better able to highlight poor performance and you know set an action plan in place to correct course correct poor supplier performance or or simply resource a, a, a contract and and this. Is really, really powerful stuff. And when I talk about procurement's big data opportunity, you know, it's this type of new and game changing ability that gets me really excited about the procurement profession in the 2020s. So, quick summary, right? Next slide, right? Macro business trends are increasing the importance of supplier contracts. Um, we talked about those, right? Speed and agility, big data, you know, the move to an uh, on demand model. Um, you know, innovation, um, you know, standard contract management, pr you know, approaches and, and solutions have become table stakes, right? You need, you need to have the efficiencies, right? If you're, if you're not doing those basic things, you know, you have fallen behind. Those are table stakes. But what gets me really excited, you know, is really the, the last section. And we're going to dive into detail in the report that's going to be coming out next week, uh, in much more detail, um, you know, about, you know, the smart and innovative, uh, solutions and strategies that can drive and transform vendor performance and impact the bottom Bottom line and make procurement, you know, as relevant and if not more relevant to business today. And so, Scott, let me let me pass it back to you. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate that uh, for those uh, for those insights here today. Uh, let me talk a little bit uh, very briefly here about who are we, Sirion Labs. Um, Sirion Labs was founded uh, seven years ago, really with the primary focus of changing the way buyers and suppliers interact and really pushing the boundaries of what is CLM by leveraging AI to transform enterprise contract management. Today, we serve some of the largest and most recognized brand names around the world, including the likes of EY and Unilever and Vodafone, Credit Suisse, BP, and others. We have uh, today managing greater than 300,000 buyers and suppliers on our Sirion platform and have been able to deliver hard value back to our customers in excess of $2.2 billion in, in leakage, as Andrew was talking about before and those uh, those vectors that we were speaking about. Next slide, please. Today, if you speak specifically about the services space, as Andrew was speaking, these complex services agreements that we're entering into today in today's uh, everything as a service economy, uh, management of these are highly siloed, broken, right? The business stakeholders, legal, business, relationship, corporate risk, finance, each work within their own enterprise stack of tools and technologies. The problem statement here is, though, these, these technologies are oftentimes isolated and do not interact. As a business stakeholder, I need to go to one, two, three, four, sometimes five different systems just to put my finger on the overall health and wellness of this particular provider or contractual relationship. Really enter Sirion in 2012, right? Right, and really looking to transform that. Built upon a RESTful API layer, we're providing an end-to-end -end view of contract lifecycle management and, and uh, the overall performance from, I'll call it cradle to grave. Next slide, please. If you see the CLM value strategy here, what is uh, what is CLM all the way through what we're viewing as CLM++? Today, the, the state of CLM is migrating off to the right in, in at a rapid pace, right? Legacy CLM tools are looking to remake themselves as a higher, you know, a, a contract authoring and smart repository with some level of AI-driven auto-tagging and of, uh, of clauses, right? But, but, you know, more smart repositories or what we'll call CLM Plus are incorporating contract analytics, taking the output of that AI, not just clause level extraction and capturing risk and deviation analytics, extracting metadata from your contracts so you can see what types of agreements are, are you know, in your legacy past, what are your company positions. Uh, but furthermore, Sirion is looking to push the bounds in what we call CLM Plus Plus, 
and this is incorporating the post-signature management of performance and invoice auditing and establishing that collaboration and enterprise network that Andrew was just spoken, speaking about a moment ago, right? In effect, allowing us a single platform to from the point of sourcing all the way through to the point of renewal to manage and, and, and ensure the value promised is the value delivered in that particular agreement. Next slide, please. Sirion's end-to-end functionality is really focused in six key areas, right? That's a contract authoring, contract management, post-signature performance, invoice, and collaboration management. All of this is brought to life through a, through a real-time uh, analytics layer that provides deep insights into the overall health and wellness and performance of your governance processes as you, uh, as you manage the, the contracts that you're, um, that you're tracking against. Now I want to spend just a few minutes to talk briefly about the use of AI in the Sirion platform itself. So what are we looking at here? On the left-hand side, we're talking about that legacy pass that I was speaking about, right? Taking those paper contracts out of the file room and putting them into your repository. But now we're layering AI on top of that and the system is automatically extracting key pieces of information from this particular contract. These can be clauses or metadata from clauses such as um, you know, the governing law uh, state of New York as an example, or more effectively here, what are the obligations, the discrete commitments that exist within this particular contract extracted automatically with relevant pieces of information? Who's responsible? What's the category? This is now ready to be connected to a scheduler and managed via human or automated process so that we can ensure the contract is compliant. We are compliant with the contract just as the supplier is themselves. Next slide, please. So we just talked about the past, right? Now let's talk about the, the present, right? Uh, here, uh, but if I, you know, zoom out, I've digitized my uh, digitized my legacy past, and I'm looking at what am I dealing with uh, here within my contract estate, right? Sirion AI is highlighting to me what types of contracts do I have: treasury agreements, custody agreements, you know, brokerage agreements. What clauses may be missing from those particular contracts? With respect to customer audit rights, what percentage of the contracts actually contain those versus do not or where the data protection laws are defined right these analytics are coming to light through the auto extraction capabilities within the Sirion labs platform next slide please now fast forward to the to, to today we're negotiating a contract the Sirion AI is, facilita is facilitating AI-assisted contract negotiation. I, either I'm working from my own paper and the Sirion system is automatically you know, helping me select the appropriate template for that particular supplier, that region, that country, geography, or, or transaction value. Or I'm bringing in third-party paper and my, my AI-powered assistant here is mapping all of the clauses that are in that third-party paper, tagging them to the clauses in my clause library, and making it easy for me to negotiate that counterparty paper back closer to my preferred position. Next slide, please. Now that we've executed that digital contract and we've negotiated a contract and we've reduced the risk in that particular agreement, we need to automate the management of performance. Integrating with transaction systems like ITSM tools in the upper left-hand corner here allow me the ability to track and manage performance, service level compliance across the globe, or integrating with an ERP tool, or P2P tool to bring in the billing data, volumetric billing data, allow me to identify areas of potential leakage so I can, I can plug them before that money leaves my coffers. Next slide, please. And this, uh, in, in here we are, the last slide I wanna talk about and then we'll, we'll take a quick minute of Q&A is that Sirion's platform built on that REST API layer allows our, our clients to readily integrate with their core transaction systems, your service, your, your ITSM tools, your finance and accounting tools, your other platforms, driving insights into, for example, as you see here, expected versus actual spend uh, information, how much of that spend is actually, um, you know, we're actually under budget for the year, which is a great thing here. Spend by line item type, am I spending more in ARC and Rook charges and other pieces as, uh, as I against what I plan to spend on a base perspective. Uh, let's go ahead and shift to uh, take maybe a minute of, of questions here, uh, DJ. Yes, Scott, uh, thank you for that. I know we are, we are uh, just got one minute now. So I'll take one question today. 
uh, sorry about that. So this one is for Andrew. Um, Andrew, pre and post award management of suppliers have traditionally been disconnected. What's the additional value that companies can expect by connecting these two areas? And what's the best way to do this? Yeah, great. So, so that's a great question. So, real quick, right? So, um, you know, I, I, I think, right? So, so, so obviously, right? You know, for for organizations to optimize the employer, the the entire source to pay or source to settle process, right? You need to have, uh, you, you know, you know, a, a a seamless process that's managed holistically, and and really, it's the underlying technologies that support that that provide visibility, right? So, you know, when you when you remove you know human touches as you as you take information from from a sourcing event into contracts as as you go through that contracting process you know if you're able to automate that i mean you know really i mean that's where we see the best in classes have really gained extraordinary leverage in you know some of what had been traditionally tactical processes and really turning them to a strategic advantage thank you andrew unfortunately that's all the time that we have today uh, thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar and uh, we will be sending out the webinar recording and the slides uh, at the end of this webinar you will see a short survey of three three or four questions please do fill that and uh, we look forward to uh, having you us uh, with us on on future webinars thank you so much and have a great day